How's it going? So as you notice, we're sitting in the van. Took this thing in last week. I guess a little bit of an update on what's going on before we um, attempt to repair this thing today. I always love it when you're in an empty parking lot. There's like three cars in the whole lot and someone pulls up right next to you for no reason. Anyways, took this van into a shop and had it diagnosed. Turns out we do have a head gasket issue, but there's some mitigating circumstances with that. We ran the VIN number and the numbers on the engine in this thing, and as it turns out, back east somewhere, there was one manufacturing plant, one specific one, that built these two-valve 5.4 V8s that had some robotic errors with assembly. The short version is, as the robot arms grabbed the cylinder heads, brought them over to attach them to the engine block, apparently the tooling or the fixturing or something wasn't quite right, and a bunch of the heads wound up scraping along one of the dowels that sticks out of the block that aligns the head. And that did two things. One, it put a score mark on the head, and also a little piece of uh, metal, or several pieces of metal could come off of that dowel or off of the head and be stuck between the mating surfaces. So what that means is you have an engine that'll probably run fine for a while. The head gaskets could, can kind of absorb some of that debris that's in there. But over time, and way too soon, this thing, well, it's got 104,000 miles on it now. I started barely noticing this problem at about 97,000 miles, but basically you get premature warpage of the heads and or head gasket failure or cracked heads, um, any number of things like that. So, at 104,000 miles, basically need to replace the engine. You can't get the heads off of this motor while it's installed, but if you take the engine out, you could pull the heads off and remachine them, but nine times out of 10 with this particular problem, the heads are gonna need to be surfaced so much that there isn't enough material left, so you wind up shaving them quite a bit, and or the heads have become warped and or cracked. So if you've got the engine out of the vehicle, you might as well just replace it. There's been a number of issues also on these engines with the intakes and some other things that have been updated over the years. So you're better off just getting a new crate motor and putting it in here. In theory, you could rebuild this one, but you have to send it out, they have to do a bunch of work, and then there's a very high likelihood that they have to replace a bunch of parts, and it could cost the same amount or more than just getting a crate motor from another manufacturer that has fixed a lot of the problems. So. We're going to try something on this today. Before we do that, though, I'm going to explain. I kind of set up a little demo on how head gaskets work. And head gasket in a bottle, I'm sure you've seen it for sale. Head gasket repair at the auto parts store. You pour it in your engine and it magically fixes the problem. Um, there are some scenarios where that might work as a stopgap. Definitely not a proper fix. But I'm going to show you this little uh, demonstration that I set up of kind of how a head gasket works, what it's supposed to do, and what the theory behind the cheese, I mean the glue, is. This was one of those things that I thought up kind of at the last second. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Okay, I think I've come up with a way to explain how head gaskets work, and also how head gasket sealers can work, and why I think that maybe it's not going to work with this particular situation. Now, this is going to be a little bit crude, but I think it will get the idea across. We're going to use these two pieces of wood here that, as you can see, aren't the smoothest things in the world. So we'll say that this is your engine block and this is your cylinder head. We need to get all these imperfections here to mate together so that we have a seal that can hold a bunch of pressure. Now, this is where it gets weird. We have some Ritz crackers. Bear with me. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that these Ritz crackers are your head gasket. And basically, they fill in all the little gaps and everything between the two pieces so that you can get a good seal. So what happens is, over time, or because of other factors, you can get little pieces of this gasket that start to erode away. And eventually, over time, you're going to end up with a little channel that goes all the way across. It'll typically kind of wear a little bit wider like this and then sort of channel through, 
but you're going to have a little passageway like that. Then if you notice, you can kind of see right through there. The idea with head gasket sealers is it's some sort of a glue that will attach to the fibers or the part particles of your head gasket and sort of plug this up temporarily. Yeah, that's right, we're using this. So the theory is the glue will go in here and sort of fill up that area. So as you can see here, now we have little bits of cracker and cheese in there and the cheese has plugged up that hole that wore through. But it's not the best thing in the world. After a while and a few more heat cycles and whatnot, it can start working its way out of there and then your leak will come back. Now this is traditional head gasket failure. Let me show you what's going on in the engine in my van. I certainly didn't imagine that I was gonna be smashing Ritz crackers, easy cheese, and two by fours together when I got up this morning. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on in my van. So when it was assembled, there was robotic errors and it basically caused a few different things to happen. See, we've got this score mark here that provides a channel for gases or coolant or oil to go right through. Now the gasket may work for a while, but as you can see here, it starts to wear out. Like this is still maybe sealed a little bit, but not very good. And then over here, we've got some little rocks that I picked up off the ground, and these are like metal shavings. So what that does is it keeps these two surfaces from completely sealing together. Now, the gasket that's in there may work for a while, but over time, it's, um, well, see how stuff just kind of falls right out of there? And now, the gasket is going to erode away much faster. And if we try to fill this up with something, like the cheese, we still have these bits of metal in here that are keeping the surfaces from staying together. So while this may work for a while, see how that's not squeezing out of there? We still have gaps. So you can put some glue or something in there, but that's just gonna flow straight through because the two surfaces are not even really mating together. But the overall idea with head gaskets is to take very small imperfections in two pieces of metal and fill up those gaps just enough under pressure so that they can seal. Now I've removed those little bits of stuff. Watch what happens when you press down. The cheese oozes out. So that is filling in all the gaps and everything down there and actually sealing a lot better. If we lift this apart now, you can see it's spread out a lot more. I don't know if that made sense or if it helped at all, but there you go. Okay, um, gravel's kind of deep right here. So today we're gonna try something. I think I'm going to record an explanation later, so in theory you should already know what's going on with this van, but we're gonna try some head gasket in a bottle on this thing. So, this is like a 15 step process that takes uh, anywhere between 18 and 24 hours to complete. So we're gonna start the process. Step one on this is going to be uh, draining the coolant, which actually there isn't really much left in there now. At this point, it's mostly water, but we're gonna drain the coolant. We're gonna use a chemical flush to clean out the cooling system to make sure there's no trace of coolant in there at all. And then we're gonna start the process with this. I think this has, is that a little leaflet inside there? I don't know if it folds open. So it comes with a short novel printed inside here. Basically, you put the stuff in, you heat cycle it, you let the engine cool down, you put some more stuff in, you take some more stuff out, then you idle for an hour, you idle for 45 minutes, you let it sit for 12 to 24 hours with the cooling system empty, then you fill it back up, and yeah, lots of things. I haven't gotten the repair quote on this thing yet, but I know these engines are about $4,500, somewhere in there, and it's about 20 hours of labor to get the engine out of here and put another one back in. So, this stuff was 14 bucks and I had to buy about $40 worth of uh, flush chemicals and coolant. So 
for whatever that totals, less than 60 bucks, I think it's worth a try. Right now, I can sort of drive the thing, but it's got combustion gas that is constantly flowing into the cooling system. We're not getting any external leaks. We're not getting any oil into the coolant or anything like that. So, yeah, we're going to start it, and I'll check in in a few minutes. Okay, we've got the flush started. Got all the coolant out of there. Got the uh, cleaning stuff in, and now we're running it for about 10 minutes or so. As you can see, we're still getting a little bit of uh, condensation or steam coming out of it, but yeah. Anyways, um, go let this run for about 15 minutes, and then we will flush it a couple more times. Let me start with this stuff. Can't believe I'm actually using this. Uh. All right, cooling system's all flushed out now and everything. I've got a little tub down here with some warm water in it, and it wants you to pre-mix this stuff with, with warm water before you dump it in there. So, um, we are going to do that now. I'm supposed to shake it well. Oh, man. It uh, sounds like chicken soup. All right, cast your bets now. What color is this stuff gonna be? I'm going with a, uh, like a gray color, maybe? But we will find out here in just a second. Yeah. It's sort of a copper color with a bunch of metallic gloop in it. Now let's zoom down here a little bit so you can um, be mesmerized by its swirliness as we dump this in here. You are in my power. Oh yeah. Oh man, I'm not gonna lie. This does not look like something I would normally want to pour into my engine. But, um, yeah, well, here we are. <laughs> Interesting. All right, I'm gonna find a stick or something to mix that up with, and we'll dump it in. I got some of it on my hands, it's disgusting. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here. And then pour the remaining amount of it back in the bottle here. And then we'll dump that into the coolant tank too. This looks like there's some chunky goodness here. All right, there we go. I don't think my nose is working right now. I feel like that should have an odor. Eh. All right, and then top it off with water and run engine for 10 minutes until thermostat opens. All right, I can do that. And now I go make some coffee while this thing idles for 10 minutes. Okay. Um, I'm just going to skip forward a little bit. This is going to get really monotonous and repetitious and redundant and other words that don't start with R that mean the same thing. I'll be back. Okay, we're on step five or six. It's let the engine get to operating temperature and then idle for 15 more minutes. Then we have to shut it off for 45 minutes. But as you can see, we're still getting quite a bit of bugs on the lens. Uh, we're still getting quite a bit of water vapor out the back. Oh yeah, check it out. And if you look real close, you can see it puffing. So it's definitely coming out of like, probably one cylinder or something like that. Just to make this a little bit easier on myself though, I've got one of these Wise outdoor battery cameras. We're gonna stick that right here, pointing at the temperature gauge, so I can keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't overheat or whatever. Actually, it looks like we just came up to operating temperature. Do we have heat? Yeah, we got a little bit of heat. Okay, um, set timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, counting down. Okay, so we got that going on. And you can see on the phone, we've got a perfect view of our temperature gauge.
Now what we're gonna do is, well, we gotta get it up to operating temperature, then we have to hold the throttle open. So what I'm gonna do, since we have the hand controls on here, I'm going to adjust these two jam nuts here so we can push the pedal down the tiniest amount necessary to get it up to 1200 RPM. Normally on this thing, if you just push it this much, it'll just jump to like 3000 RPM or more. But anyways, uh, let's get it fired up here. And then we're supposed to wait till we get to operating temperature, which is, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes or something. So we'll wait for that. And then we'll make our adjustments with the appropriate tools. Interesting note, however, we're not getting the moisture out of the tailpipe. Huh. We did just fire it up, but normally it starts doing that pretty quick. Maybe there's something to this glue. Well, so I have seen it work in the past, obviously not a permanent fix, and there's something to be said about pouring junk like that in your engine, but um, if it gets me a few more months of use, it might be worth it. Still haven't gotten the, oh, well, I guess this is only Saturday. I have to wait till Monday to get the actual repair quote on this thing, but it's probably gonna be in the neighborhood of five to six thousand dollars. We'll see. Okay, we're up to operating temperature, so let's uh, go ahead and see if we can do some fancy magic here. Here we go. And then, in theory, all I have to do is twist this nut, and uh, we should be able to get the RPM we desire. Okay, there, as you can see, the RPM jumps way up. This is going to be a very fine tune. I don't know why it's so hard to get the RPM up on this thing. Oh wait, if I turn on the air conditioner, that will, that changes a few things. Let's try it now. There we go. Oops, creeping higher. Okay, that's probably closer to 2000 RPM. It drops down a bit when the AC compressor kicks on, but, uh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, doesn't cause too much of a problem. I guess I'm gonna sit here for 20 minutes and babysit it. Yay! I am noticing intermittent, uh, yeah, there you can see. I am noticing intermittent water vapor coming out. Meh, we'll let it work. I find myself coming over here and, uh, reading this label over and over and over again. I feel like they could have written the instructions maybe a little bit better, but... Yeah, see, so yeah, we got some some sunset action going on over there. We just ran the engine at 1200 RPM for 20 minutes. We're letting it cool for an hour. This next little tiny part here is for vehicles with intermittent or minor leaks, it's recommended to follow step 12 by idling for one hour, then allow another hour to cool. My food's going to be here shortly, so I think by the time I'm done eating, our hour will have elapsed. So we'll fire it up again. Anyways. I've been noticing that the uh, the water vapor seems to come and go, so it's clearly doing something. But I think letting it sit overnight is what like cures whatever this glue is. I don't know. Kind of a semi-boring, obnoxious process. But if it works for 40 or 50 bucks or whatever it is, um, can't complain too much. Yeah. Well, it appears to be the next morning, and I think it's time to see if our glue in a bottle worked. Got to close the drain plug on that, fill it back up with coolant, then in theory we're done. By the way, random life hack with jugs of coolant. I'm sure this is one of those things that's obvious, but you know how these have this little foil seal in here that's impossible to remove? Well, since I don't know how long, there's been these little safety 
child safety lids. All you gotta do is use this little edge to cut the foil. You just, you just go like that, and now it's open. And obviously, you pick the bits of foil out of there so it doesn't get into your engine, but uh, there's my random life hack for the year, or whatever. Okay, we've reached the moment of truth. I'm filling the coolant and we've gotten to the point where I have to fire it up, so. Let's see how much condensation we get out of the tailpipe. It'll be normal to get a little bit, actually probably a decent amount for a while, because after idling this for that long with that leak, the entire exhaust system is gonna be full of moisture and probably standing water. Well, not standing water, but anyways, I'll just start it. Okay, so we've got it filled up to the cold fill level, got the cap back on it. I'm gonna wait till the thermostat opens. These are self-bleeding systems, roughly, but usually you gotta run them until the thermostat actually opens for everything to equalize and whatnot. But let me show you what I was talking about. So as you can see, we've got a ton of water vapor, but that is, well, that makes sense. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but if you look real close, see how there's water and moisture all around inside there? With all the, with the leaking and stuff that was going on, the entire exhaust system is just completely full of moisture right now. So it's gonna take quite some time for this to burn off. So I'm gonna let it run long enough to make sure the coolant is topped up correctly, and then we are going to go for a drive. My main concern with this leak was the overpressurization of the cooling system. And it wasn't really that bad, but knowing what I know about the type of leak that this thing has, I don't know if this stuff's gonna work. I'm gonna drink some coffee, and then uh, we'll see how this goes. Well, I've been driving around for about 45 minutes now, up and down some hills and things like that, and uh, coolant tank hasn't blown off. And we have heat, even when I left it idling at, outside of a store for a few minutes. So, um, I think tentatively, we might be good for a while. Sweet. Well, I'm definitely noticing some weird smells, but um, yeah, I'll have to give it another couple days and I think we should be good. But it seems like our cloud of steam has disappeared and the coolant tank has not boiled over. <laughs> Excellent. Fast forward yet another day. Let's start it up and see what happens. Eh, no oil smoke today. That's usually an intermittent thing anyways. Any Ford Modular V8 I've had always gives you a little puff of oil. Okay, so we're getting some condensation. But it's not lingering. I think this is what you would call normal startup condensation because of the temperature differential. You can see though it only goes to right here and then ends. And it's already starting to fade out a little bit. Does not sound like we have a misfire at all. Well, um, I'm gonna be driving somewhere here in a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that uh, that glue in a bottle actually did something. I'll check back in in a couple minutes after this warms up, but I'm pretty sure that this little bit right here will go away. Eh, okay, scratch that. That is definitely water vapor that's getting combusted, huh. Yep, see how it's lingering and going everywhere now? Well, having a little bit of water vapor in the exhaust, eh, that does mean we are getting some coolant or coolant in the combustion chamber. I'll find out when I drive it if the coolant tank overpressurizes and blows off, but this actually kind of makes sense because the problem we have here has to do with scoring marks on the head and also some little bits of metal shavings that are sandwiched between the two pieces. This product is designed for gaskets that have failed, which are kind of different. You're gonna have sort of a wide area that funnels into a smaller area, and it's not gonna be a straight channel all the way through, or if it is, it's kind of tapered. And these products are designed to basically clog up things that funnel from a large to a small area and plug them up. But in this case, since we, well, according to the problems at that one engine manufacturing plant, 
we've got a clean score mark along the head and then also those metal chips in there the surfaces are not going to be mating together properly which means there isn't really a spot for this glue material to grab onto it may form a little bit of a seal but then it can just blow right through because there's nothing to hold it so um yeah it was worth a try but like I said, I'm going to be driving around here a little bit, so we'll give it a test and see. If we do get a little bit of water vapor coming out of it, um, it's not the end of the world. The main thing is the coolant overflowing. Um, okay, well, apparently it's snowing now. Let's, uh, let's, see if we, let's see if we lost any coolant during that trip. Doesn't look like the bottle's leaked anything. The top's dry, fluid's at the same level. All right, cool. Gross. That was a little bit of unexpected weather. <laughs> yeah, so I had to go up to the DMV to do some stuff. Turns out today is a holiday, which is weird that they scheduled my DMV appointment on a holiday, but there was a note on the door saying, if your appointment was today, it's been rescheduled for tomorrow. So it took me about a half hour to get up there, and when I came back, there was two inches of snow on the ground. Not nearly as much here, but uh, yeah, I should probably get inside. Ooh, water. Mmm, snow. Well, at least it's nice and warm in here. I had the foresight to turn on the pellet stove before I left. I had no idea it was going to actually snow. <laughs> as far as the van goes and it being repaired, I'm not sure. The coolant bottle didn't overflow, but it's cold enough outside now that every car has visible water vapor fumes coming out of the exhaust. But that trip I made, it's probably hour and a half total and all the coolant's still there so is it fixed i don't know we'll have to give it a few more days but for now i think that's good i'm uh i'm gonna change and get dried off all the snow melted and insert excuses it's supposed to get down to eight degrees tomorrow night good stuff i think the problem was i told a few people we we're probably done with winter for the year but here it is, February 21st, and um, yeah. All right, well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.